and welcome to the Shonky Lab once again. Uh, I'm Elton McManus, and this week I am joined by Matt. Hello, Matt. Yes. Oh, hello. I didn't. I. So, every. It seems every other show decides to say introduce me my first and last or just first name. So I was. I guess I was off uh, my track there. I was expecting last name, which is. <laughs> Part of that delay, so uh, I hello. Do, I do apologize for that. that no, is... no, no, no. It, it's not necessary. I just get in a, a, apparently a rhythm I didn't realize I was in until just now. Oh, okay, fair enough. No, it's me. It's my poor introductions to these sort of things. <laughs> I am pro- proper bobbins at this sort of thing. But you know, no worries. We'll 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 carry on. We've also got Jim. Hello. And we've got Greg with the rubbish Skype. <laughs> Greg, wow, that's real bad. <laughs> it is really bad. Greg, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Okay, right. Just bleep at us when you want to say something. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh dear, what a what a wonderful way to start things. Anyway, yes, we're here to talk about roller coasters this week. Um, so uh, I want to kick this off. Uh, Matt, you have a uh, a podcast called Attraction Obsession. Yes. Uh, I take it from that that you love roller coasters and attractions and so forth. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the probably the uh, what am I trying to say? The uh, I lost my train of thought. But absolutely yes. I mean, it, it's a huge. I guess a part of my life in a sense i live in orlando so i'm smack dab between the major orlando parks disney universal i'm a stone's throw away from tampa which has their roller coaster parks and i'm very fortunate enough to be married to a woman who loves them as much as i do and we arrange at least one if not two vacations or holidays around visiting a park with roller coasters that we've never been on before so yes to put it mildly which is what i was looking for yes they are a big part of my life you live in the happiest place in the world, apparently. I live in what is advertised as the happiest place in the world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim, there's you live... visiting and then there's living. Yeah. Jim, you live in one of the um, the rainiest parts of the world, don't you? I do, I do. <laughs> in the north of England, where there are probably no roller coasters, actually. <laughs> it's where ducks go to commit suicide sometimes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's true, but I have been to Orlando many, many times. And uh, for my sins in my youth, I did work in a fun fair. <laughs> oh. And I uh, got to see the fun things happen behind the scenes at theme parks. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So, so you know the ins and outs of things. It's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> After this, will anyone be wanting to get on a roller coaster? Um, probably. I mean, I, I, it's not put me off going to theme parks. Um Provided they're run by professionals, not by the <laughs> not by the cowboys in every sense of the word, in the one I work for. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! This is <clears throat> getting scarier by the second. <laughs> <laughs> which which is now gone. It's now gone. It's been raised to the ground, and the uh, the land has been sowed with salt. It no longer oh. exists. <laughs> which is why I can badmouth them with impunity. Because uh, what they're going to do? Fire me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Matt, have you ever worked in um? Uh, at, uh, what would you call them? Roller coaster parks? At, at, attract, attraction parks? I, I'm not too sure. Amusement um, parks? Yeah, over here, I don't know if this is a worldwide term, but it's uh, for like the big Disney, the multiple, and Universal, the multiple areas that are grandiosely schemed and themed, they're commonly referred to as theme parks. The parks that are just have rides, but nothing really centered around them as a theme are amusement parks. So it's theme parks and amusement parks are the two most common words. Yeah. But to answer your question, no, I actually never, I never have. Ah, oh, so you, you've never seen backstage, never pulled back the curtain. Well, I have. Um, I have. A, it's hard not to have to live in this area as long as I have and not come in contact with people that work with them. So I've made a lot of close friends, not because they're in theme parks, but. Well, not because they're not working for theme parks, but uh, I've made a lot of close friends that do a lot of the deep behind the scenes work and have gotten the opportunity to see how some of these things work. And sometimes not for the better, as uh, yeah, we've already alluded to. Yeah. OK. Greg, I'm wondering if you're still there at all. I hear that you can hear me or not. 
we we can just about hear you. Um, oh, you you may want to raise the baked bean can to your mouth a little bit more, though. <laughs> He's going to smash his computer up. Isn't he? Oh, man. I, I, I get the feeling that you're going to smash your computer Hello. up very Hello. soon. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll let Greg chime in when he can chime in. Greg, just shout stuff, obscenities or whatever you wish <laughs> just to get through to us. Because I, I really want you on it. Basically, the reason why we're doing roller coasters today. Oh, he's dropped off again. Is... I, I I put out the, the call when I relaunched Shonky Lab. I put out the call for people to come along and say, you know, do you want to do a show with me? Would you like to do a show with me? And Greg was one of the first people that said, yeah, okay, let's do roller coasters. Um, I'm also looking forward to the show that I do with him about the internet as well. <laughs> <laughs> and inter internet providers, maybe. I don't know. Um, yes, um, so... He put it forward, so I, I really want Greg on here because I know that he's a um, a roller coaster fanatic. You know, he's been on millions, millions of rides. I I don't know how many rides he's taken, but I know that he's been on various. And he, he's travelled around the country chasing roller coasters and chasing that thrill as well. Um, I lay my ca cards on the table right now. I flipping hate them. <laughs> I I really, really hate them. Um. I, I, I get no fun out of queuing up for hours. I get no fun out of watching children be be violently ill after they've been on these <laughs> rides. I ha I get no fun from watching children crying and moaning at their parents. Why can't I go on that ride? Why can't I go over there? Why am I too small? Why why won't I fit on the bubble works? And so yeah, I I like going to these places to hold people's coats. I'm very good at that. <laughs> so, so never get a job as a ride operator, Elton, because what you described there was my working day for thirteen hours for weeks on end. <laughs> <laughs> of what? Just watching children cry, cry, be sick, fight. <laughs> um, see, I, I actually take advantage of everything you talk about. We kind of make a impromptu scavenger hunt every time we go to the park and whichever finds the most of what you just uh, laid out we don't really win a prize but it's a nice friendly bet and a way to pass the time and get less annoyance out of those types of people oh it's like <laughs> it's like a real life version of where's waldo or where's wally isn't right? it <laughs> yeah Where, where's the binoculars there they are over there someone's dropped some oh, there's man. always a there's a five point instant bonus especially at disney world when for the first person to hear any parent say do you know how much me your father and or mother paid for this trip <laughs> 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 oh brilliant oh no i'd love to hear that and, <laughs> you know you know mickey and donald and all the people that dress up in them sort of costumes as well they must hear tons and tons of that crap all oh, the time yeah, i can only imagine you know you've got such a thick skin to 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 keep that smile on your face, I'm I'm sure they're swearing behind the the, the big heads, and oh, yeah. thinking, just fuck off, little child, fuck, <laughs> don't tread on my foot again, please, honestly. So I remember at Disney, all the staff you see, they aren't ride operators or piss servers; they're all cast members. Correct. Ah. Yes, I mean, uh, at the Tin Pot um, <laughs> theme park I worked on, it was a, it was a cowboy theme people theme park called Frontierland, um, run by crooks <laughs> and incompetence. They had the goal to show us, for our staff training, a Disney training video circa about 1970, <laughs> which was kind of hilarious compared to you know, being shown to a room of like ex-cons, ne'er-do-wells, and, and <laughs> broke students who were working there for the summer, which I was. And uh, you, know, you know this whole thing that you know you you're all part of the cast, you're all part of a one big production. <laughs> you, you have to play your role, helping people's dreams come true. Um, which I imagine you know now actually you know uh, um, that probably doesn't plays probably just as well to disgruntled disemployees in Florida <laughs> as it does to uh, disin <laughs> disgruntled employees in the uh, in the north of England. Oh yes, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um... What is it about the rides 
that you do you crave the rides or do you just enjoy the atmosphere when you go to these sort of places i'm about the rides i i mean the the atmosphere is pretty impressive the things the the, the new areas that are opening are they are stunning i can't take that away from it but if there's not a good ride within that atmosphere there's no reason for me to go so i'm always looking for the next ride be it a mechanical achievement be it going faster or higher or upside down more than the last one or something inside that's technically never been done that's what i'm always chasing after down here and pretty much everywhere we go wow and do you get like a massive bus off of them uh i enjoy them i I wouldn't say i get I, i know what you're talking about but i don't know that i get that much of a rush off of it i get the rush during the ride it's it's impossible to control my adrenaline but when it's over pretty much by the time i'm out of the gift shop it's gone so it's i don't know maybe i am chasing some kind of dragon on these that i'm not aware of because it goes so fast I, that could be a possibility yeah oh man yeah i would so dearly love to to want that craving yeah you know, flip it out it sounds like i want an addiction on them but so you I, don't you don't enjoy them like as a physical experience either because i you what you explained about not liking it you certainly explained a visit to a park that is certainly <laughs> cumbersome and can get annoying real quick but you you don't physically enjoy being on these rides either it's it's the the thing of not being in control mm. and mm. it's now i right okay let, let, let's chop it down a little bit more um i can't drive in the car with my parents Anymore. Okay, <laughs> because at one point it, it it felt weird me driving my parents around, and now no, it's the norm. I drive you, you're not driving me. Let me drive you, because otherwise it freaks me the crap out. Okay, um, and it, it's just more the control thing of not having a big red button where I can hit it and say stop, please. You know, I'm I'm going up forty five degrees here. This is abnormal. I don't like this. And what's that clicking going on? What the hell's that? That's scaring the crap out of me. And I, I just don't know. It, it, it scares the living bejesus. Once I'm, I'm going fast in a straight line, that's fine. I can deal with that. It's the, um, it's the, the sheer terror of you know, dying on one of these things. I know <laughs> I'm not going to die on one of these things, but it's just the sheer terror of not being in control not well, well you say that, down. Alan, but <laughs> I mean, on, for, for me, I, I, yeah, I mean, I can tell you some stories that will really put you <laughs> up and for life because <laughs> you can die on these things. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> admittedly, I think generally you have to be really stupid to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, for me, I when I was younger, it was kind of it was like, give me the biggest roller coaster, give me your biggest most terrifying ride and uh and now i'm much more kind of oh yeah that's good yeah uh it um big thunder mountain magic kingdom yeah fine fine the Brer rabbit one fine fine um atlantis at sea world fine um that one they have at um bush gardens uh one there for the desert oh is it kiri where it's it you're hanging from the top of it, and it goes oh, just a near vertical. That's it. Yeah, there's a yep. nearly near vertical drop. That 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 can fuck right off. No, oh, <laughs> I'm not oh, putting myself I, through that. <laughs> I couldn't get there fast enough when that opened. <laughs> I say, if I'd been a few years younger, you wouldn't. You'd, you'd have had to fight to keep me off that. But <laughs> just, at some point after I turned forty, something went in my head. It was kind of like, oh no, no. I just it's the actual dropping. I'm fine with. What what frightens me is I know I've got a long queue for me to get nervous. And then the long crawl up to the first big drop, mm. and it's that that anticipation that I think might do my heart in now. <laughs> yeah, I the first time I think for the first time in my life I got off a ride and went that may have been a little too much for me was this year. Speaking of of getting older, I, man, the, God, I hate this topic so much, but I guess now you put that in my head. Well, we'll do a show on that later if you want. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that, for the first time ever in my life, I, I went to um, we went to Magic Mountain in California, in Valencia, California. For the first time, I got off a ride going, that may have been a little too much. I don't think I'm going to do that again. It was called 
X2. Have you guys seen anything about that? No, but I know. I've been on, I've you been have? on that, Matt. Yeah. Okay. That was the so first I, time I, went, I was... I went on it when it was X1 before they refitted okay. it with new trains. But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, that was uh, that was the last thing we went on, which was probably a mistake. I mean, we were well in the vertigo <laughs> of everything else, and that's how we finished our day. I got off going, that might have been too much, and I didn't like that feeling. Well, we, we went there in 2005 with the Roller Coaster Club, so we had an exclusive ride session on Goliath. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. And one, one ride was enough, even for me. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> insane. I'm happy to say I did it and don't need to do it again. Holy crap! I've just it's, seen um, pictures of it. Yeah, seat, yeah. For anyone that doesn't know what it, yeah. that don't know what it is, the I mean, picture it as the ride goes. Exactly. Yeah. Picture picture already a pretty serious roller coaster as far as the track goes, but now the seats on the outside spin completely independently of that. Uh, do they spin? Um, just willy nilly, you know, wherever they want no, to spin, or no. they're programmed to spin yes. at certain points. Yes, which might actually be can... worse because they spin complete opposite direction of what your equilibrium is expecting, I think, or trying to adjust for. Oh my word! See that does uh, not. I, 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 uh, I, sorry, Greg. Go on. Go on, Greg. You can do it. <laughs> The first drop is vertical, but as you go down, the train turns the, just the, uh, the seat to face straight down as well. Mm -hmm. So you're head first, upside down. So are, are you going backwards at points? At points, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, I, yeah. I don't like going backwards on trains. Why would I want to <laughs> do it upside down? Well, on this, because it's a rotation, when you're backwards, you're also upside down. Oh, my God. God. Even though the car itself is well, I guess I suppose if the car is upside down and it rotates you, you could be backwards and right. Oh man, now we're talking. Wow, this is complicated geometry here. I'm not sure how that would work, but you're, at times you're backwards well, and upside down. You're gonna start with the front of the train. Yeah, it messes your head. That's oh, yeah. a weird one. Flipping out. So your body is expecting. Let, let's say you're you're expecting to roll all the way forwards, and so the track would roll forwards. And yet, the the computer will send your body to go backwards as your body is is also free falling forwards. Pretty much, yeah. That's bonkers. You're you're never gonna get me on that. There's no <laughs> way. <laughs> no, no way, man. I, I I can just about do. Um, I don't know if Matt's ever heard of these, but the vampire ride in Chessington. Now that is the the weak arsest thing. <laughs> In, in this country, there are bus rides more scary than this. <laughs> Matt, that would be um, the same as Ninja at Magic Mountain. Okay, then. Yes. Where it just swings gently under the track. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so, you I'm know, the kind of ride that. you would take your grandma on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we found that. We found Alton's level. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think with, with um, the vampire ride, the thing I can get on board with, it is quite low to the ground. And as you come up and you go up the hill, the ground is still very close to you. So you don't feel like you're climbing up in into the sky at quite a rate. And so when it, when it goes, you're pretty much... A, um, it's more like a go-kart run than an actual... Uh, yeah, roller coaster thing. So it's very fast, very rapid, but close to the ground. You're hugging the ground, you know, left and rights and loops and what have you. That's fine because it's it's the height that probably kills me as well, and the anticipation of climbing up as well. I, I swear, if they so had you... red buttons next to you that you could say stop, <laughs> I want to get off. I'm probably the reason why they don't put them on there. <laughs> So you oh, need to no, go on something you sign like a roller top coaster with ejector seats. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. You need something like Top Thrill Dragster then, Elton, which starts at the ground level. Yeah. And goes up to, up to 420 feet, but you're up and over it in seven seconds because it launches you at 0 to 120 miles an hour in four seconds. Mm -hmm. Ooh, bloody hell. <laughs> so it's f flat out up to 120, up 400 feet over the top and down the other side, and then it's over. 
Is that very <laughs> similar to the um, Superman ride? It's it's like that, but with a lot more clout. Yeah, Superman goes and comes back. Well, how should I say? It goes up and down where from where it came, whereas it's like Tom an L track, track, a continuous it? loop. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Superman, um, you're, you're shot out and you go up, and, and then you come back the same way. Oh, right. right. Okay. Top through old dragster, you go up and over the top, like over an arch, and then down on the other side. I think I've seen videos of this. Is, is it got the um? It's got the start lights on it as well, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. I. Uh, and it goes up. Yeah. Well, most of the time, I've been on it once. Um, when we got a rollback where the train gets almost to the top and just not uh, quite enough speed, and then rolls back again. So you're going backwards at 120. I've back heard down the, of, back down the tower. I've heard of rollbacks. I've seen a rollback. I've never actually been on. Oh, I got, oh, I'm sorry. I haven't. I've seen them on TV. I've not seen one yeah. in real life, nor been on one. So that's that's another another one of my white whales. I've I've yet to experience. Okay, we well, were we were praying for one. I got yeah, one. Right. <laughs> so a rollback. Um, yeah. I, I'm assuming right. You're playing pinball. We're not talking about your foreskin. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> not this time, anyway. No. Um, I, I'm, assu- right, I'm, I'm putting it to something else. Uh, pinball machines. A rollback would be if you didn't shoot the ball out of the top of the pinball machine and it rolled back down exactly. the, the carriage yep. where it, it went. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yep. okay. Do There's they, a video they... on YouTube of, um, of Dragster where the train was uh, just going just going fast enough to get to the top and then stopped and was perfectly balanced on the apex of the hill i think the people were up there for about 20 minutes before they sent an engineer up to give it a show oh my god foot. i've not Ooh. seen that one holy but crap it's, yeah there's, there's a video of it on youtube what an, um, find that. and there's an engineer goes up there and pushes it yeah he, there's a lift <laughs> that goes up the back of the tower and you can see him on the video go up and then it he just gives it a nudge and off it goes it just happened to Stop perfectly balanced at the apex of the hill. What? One in a million chance that it did it. Why would you want? Oh my god! Right, okay, so you're on a ride. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want that to happen. No. I want the rollback to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got a man. You wanted to push you back or push you forwards? <laughs> I... uh, well, which which is ever most convenient for him if I've been stuck up there for twenty minutes <laughs> at that point. <laughs> so you're stuck on a roller coaster, and a man in dungarees and a spanner walks all the way Pretty up much. and goes. Looks at you, starts tutting, goes, that doesn't look good, and then pushes you. Pretty much. This is hoping he's not on break when you make the call, too, of course. That's it, yeah. (laughs) Walking up there with a sandwich hanging out of his mouth. I've been been stuck on rides a number of times. Wow. I've I've been on over 500 coasters, so I've been stuck on a few from time to time. It's no big deal. I've never been stuck on a coaster. I've been stuck on a lot of dark rides, though. I got stuck on um, Space Mountain in uh, Orlando. Oh, really? Yeah, they took us off. We got had to get off halfway through and walk through. They put all the lights on, and we had to get out and walk. I actually would have loved it. Walk through the... Uh, it was brilliant. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I, like, I would have loved so to cool. do that, yep. <laughs> and then you get free exit passes for the rest of the park. I'm just Googling Space Mountain, because I have no idea what that looks like. It's an uh, indoor roller coaster. Oh, okay. Very good, though. Very very well done, Disney ride. Lots so, of theming. Okay, so is there like a, a lot of height to this, then? <laughs> what do you say, mate? It's not overly huge, is it, really? No, it's... Well, I uh... think the, the, the fact that it's in the dark and they have a lot of trains running at the same time. I think there's two tracks in there run together, so it yeah. looks like there's a lot more going on than there is. In the initial, yeah, that's the thing. They use the dark to their advantage. It's, yeah. If you had the lights on, you were on that ride. You'd it'd be pretty relaxed. As as Disney coasters go, they're all they're all generally quite tame. They just use the theming to uh, to give it the the wow factor. Right, right. Mm. Whereas a lot of the other parks just go for size or speed or number of inversions or whatever else. Right. Okay. See the. I know I've been on the Vampire Ride. I've also been on Colossus, and I didn't enjoy that whatsoever. That's because it's a sack of old shit. Oh, okay, fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) Should I just stick to the coconut (laughs) shies? Is this Colossus in Thorpe Park? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. 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 I've been yeah, I went on that too. That was that was a long wait and a little bit of a disappointment at the end. (laughs) 
<laughs> is that the one that uh, right, I'm I'm really scratching my brain at the moment? But that's the one that rolls, isn't it? It's got yeah, like that's a, a part of loops. part I was looking forward to, and I don't know why it didn't. I mean, it was the physical thing I wanted it to be, but for some reason it just didn't give me that 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 uh the, that rush I was expecting. I don't I don't know why. Okay, so is there anything you haven't ridden then, Matt? Oh yeah, I mean, there's lots where I haven't been, but as far as a type of ride, if there's any type that I wouldn't ride, I can't think of. I'll I'll ride anything once to, even if it's my most terrifying is probably something that starts out super high, like uh, those ones that tilt you up real high and then drop you. I those are the ones I like least, but if it's one I've not been on before, I'll be I'll go on it. So I'll go on just about anything. Right. What about you, Greg? I was in Matt been to Vegas. Vegas, I went to the only one I did in Vegas was Insanity, the one that that uh, it spins around, but first the arm takes you out over the top of the building and then spins you around. That's all we had. We had time for one. That one looked the most interesting of the three that were open. So that's the one I did. I did not do the, the big shot, which is the large. On the other side of the tower. Yeah, no, that one, that one, I did, that was that would be my last of the three if we if we're doing all three probably because that looked like the most adrenaline rush one. But we really only had time for the one. And that one looked most unique, so I, we went on insanity. Okay, so is this the one that hangs you? Sorry, Greg, go on. Greg? No, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. No, okay. Um, is that the one that hangs you over? Is, is this the one at the top of a building? Yes, at the top of the... Mm. Oh, what is it? The stratosphere. It kind of looks like the Space Needle in Seattle, or the CV in Canada, in Toronto. Yeah. See, uh, yeah, I, I can do the, the climate. Right, okay. Matt, I'm a lift engineer, so you would think that I would be used to heights. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> yeah, it would be kind of part of the job. The problem is, with my job, I don't get to see the bottom. I'm either too high or oh, too close okay. to it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like... um. Eddie Murphy in The Golden Child when he throws that coin down and it doesn't hit the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm fine, so I, I can't see the bottom. So, that, you know, I've got no worries there. But yeah, You can see the ground on this. No. Uh, see, I could, oh, yeah. I could go up to the building. That's fine. But then why the hell would I want to ride a roller coaster at the top of the building? That's it's just mental. I was the complete opposite in that building, and I don't know why. When we got to the building, to the observation deck, I was sick to my stomach. Of I don't know what, and I'm not really that bad with heights. I have any natural fear anyone else would have, but I was absolutely nauseous. Then when we got on top of the building, we were outside in the open air. I was completely fine. Mm. It didn't bother me at all. So I don't know why being at the very top with nowhere to go and nothing but ground beneath me was less effect of an effect on me than inside the observation deck. It was really weird. I don't know if the trip up, because it was one of those high-speed lifts to the top maybe that messed with my stomach or something but it was a very weird experience to be in complete safety and sick to my stomach but then out on top in the open air in complete danger no matter where if i took a wrong step anywhere and i was completely fine with it that's crazy I, yeah that was I, I have no explanation for it <laughs> i had the same thing matt going up the stretch oh really house. yeah wow yeah i felt kind of woozy when we got up there but then once we got outside no problem Wow. Okay, that's so maybe, really maybe it is something to do with the lift. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it it threw me off a bit. Huh. Okay. Well, that's actually. Step out and start to go glass floors. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, have anyone had any disappointment? You know, really major disappointments when they've gone to these rides. You know, you've you've built up the anticipation, and then all of a sudden that wonderful velvet rope comes across <laughs> and they've said, no, sorry, the ride is closed. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That just happened to me. The whole reason we went to Magic Mountain was to ride Superman, the one you were asking about earlier, because I have never gotten a chance to ride it, and now I'm going out of my way to ride it. And very literally, no joke, it's my turn to get on. I take one step towards the automatic doors, and they shut right in my face, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I waited. I must have waited 25, 30 minutes for them to fix whatever they were fixing because I was not getting out of line. There's no way. So that that so that's just one time it's happened. It's happened a lot. 
I I can't imagine anything like that. That <laughs> that would be oh, it'd be so disappointing. Um, <laughs> Jim, have you got any uh, stories like that? Yeah, well, we uh, first time was at the Magic Kingdom. We queued for ages to go on the um, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I know that's fairly tame as coasters go, but you know it's it's a, it's a nice ride and it's one of the sort of iconic ones. We queued for ages in the baking heat, and then just as getting to our turn, they shut the ride um, because there was thunder. And this happens quite a lot in uh, Florida that if there's an electrical storm passing over, they do have to shut the big rides in case a lightning yep. strikes. It's just and ironic like... that you'd be at Thunder Mountain and thunder would shut. <laughs> exactly, it down. exactly. It was just kind of me and my looking around. I don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and they say he doesn't have a sense of humour. I think he does, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but we did get to go on a, on a on another trip, so that was all right. But it was it was also just you know, when you've queued for a long time in the hot Florida heat, and then just because there's a distant rumble of thunder, that's it. <laughs> Trains yeah. closed, boys. You know, bollocks. I have, I have been on a ride that they probably should have closed but didn't, which um caught fire while we were on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, right. Because... Everyone pray for the Skype not to cut out, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it was in 2008 at Lake Winnie in uh, Georgia, which is only a small park, but they got a, a great wooden coaster there. And uh, we all clambered in and on a fun our way. And as the train got to the top of the lift hill, um, passed through this blur of smoke. What, what, what was that? You know, where was the smoke coming from? The train carried on, didn't think any more of it till we got back to the station and the ride operators were uh, uh, chain ganging buckets of water up to the top to douse the motor, which had caught fire. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, it, it, was, um, it was closed for the rest of the day after that, but it was like, Jesus, that was on fire when we were on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, now that doesn't make me want to go on it if you've got people <laughs> chain ganging water up to an electrical motor. Let, let's all think about that for one <laughs> second. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was in charge of a ride that caught fire. <laughs> oh, you were in charge? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I worked at this uh, theme park, um, one of the regular rides I got to operate. Um, was like a, a mini little Ferris wheel. And they had a little, little kiddies park with lots of little rides for the little ones. And they had this Ferris wheel. It was still fairly large. You get four people in a in like a closed car. And um, this thing was old and badly maintained. There was um, a permanent uh, a mechanic on the site called Nobby. Um, and you could find him every day in the Crazy Horse Saloon, the bar that was open all day. And he was always drunk off his skull. And if you complain, look, the ride's playing up, he'd come in and look at you and go, ah, he's fucking using it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and then wander back off and drink. And like, I've been complaining for weeks about this. This first year was getting dickier and dickier. <laughs> and um, one of the problems with it was um, it had a braking system that involved um, literally <laughs> such, such a Meccano job. It had like four um, car wheels with the tires, which you pulled a lever of the brake and these sort of clamped onto the central wheel and that would stop the wheel in theory which is fine <laughs> until um there was just the slightest bit of drizzle or rain in which case these balding old tires just wouldn't grip and you couldn't stop the damn thing hmm. <laughs> and um you just if you've ever seen a ferris wheel you know you, you have to load it one side then revolve it and load the other side and you do this and the parents are all there making the funny joke, oh, oh, you're stuck, you're stuck and freaking out the kids who are, as I'm loading the ride up. Um, anyhow, on this, on this particular day, I went to the rock, got your, you had your three minutes, turned the ride off. Oh, it's not stopping. The brakes have finally given up the ghost and this ride's just whizzing round and round and round. Oh. <laughs> and the friends are going, yeah, you're stuck on it. You can't stop it. And I'm going, shut up. I really can't. I really, I really cannot stop this ride. And at that point, this guy is like, I can just hear this, what's that smell of burning? And there's like black fire coming out of the engine in the middle. Wow. I know. Shit. <laughs> and so, so I'm, I'm waving to the ride operators going, get Nobby, get, get everyone, someone help me stop this damn ride. We had to stop it by, you know, <laughs> once the motor burned out, it actually naturally slowed. But then, you know, we had to have like 10 guys manually 
operating the Ferris wheel to bring the kids down, oh. who by that point were absolutely terrified. <laughs> Probably will never, ever go on another ride again in their lives. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I have... I don't think I've ever been in an experience like either of those that I am aware of. I am sure things have happened that <laughs> weren't widely reported, but wow. I'm, I, I, I will live in that ignorant bliss and hope that I've never been on something on either of those two you described. <laughs> well, the thing is, where I worked was, um, was a big old-fashioned wooden roller coaster called the Wild Mouse. So mm -hmm. the fairly standard, you know, it's kind of it's almost like built in a huge cube and there's like about three or four tiers to it, and the car whizzes round really quickly, doing lots of tight hairpin bends. And uh, where it was built was at the edge of the park, and there was like a big uh, wooden sort of fence that had like poorly painted western scenes, and looking back now, racist caricatures of American Indians <laughs> on it. And um, that's where the staff exit was. There was like a door in the wall, which you had a pass key through, and you went, you went through there, and you got to the back rooms where the lockers were, where you could clock out and escape. Um, and like you know, the park shut at ten o'clock. I just uh, got a, got my ticket box, <laughs> just going home, and did everything else finished. But the last ride was still going around the mouse, and uh, I knew the the guys who operated on it. You know, there's, there's, when I started, oh, do you get free rides? And the guys were, you probably don't want a free ride on this. This is going to collapse <laughs> by the end of the summer. And we went, yeah, of course, yeah. Everyone says that wow. about their rides. And uh, as I say, we were just you know knocking off, going through this um, going through this doorway, which led to this you know little sort of passageway that went underneath the wild mouse. The car went over the last very top tier around the hairpin bend and the track just collapsed behind it. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and we all thought, we just stopped them watching and going, oh my God, we nearly saw a huge accident. We thought, well, that's that for the summer. That'll be closed. <laughs> Next morning, it was working again. What? <laughs> they, they got some guys in and just spot welded it back together and kind of, oh, oh. that'll do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Flipping out. No safety report, no inspection, <laughs> nothing that's supposed to happen happened. They just they just bodged it back up and crossed their fingers. Ah. Uh, see, now how would they spot check that sort of thing? Would would they have a uh, something uh planned like planned maintenance and stuff like that or would they um uh, once they repaired it you know just put two of the guys that have repaired it and go, "Yeah, it's all right, it's fine. If I go on it, then it's fine." Well, supposedly there were safety checks done like every morning. Um, and I know how lax they were. I'm going to turn it on. <laughs> Is it burnt down? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The mechanics were supposed to check everything at the end of every day, but they didn't because they're all too pissed by then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, there was things in place, but it just wasn't done. You know, people just filled in the forms and said, yeah, that's fine. When they hadn't really done anything. That was the problem. <laughs> Right. Okay. I've seen um, I've seen a road mechanic cleaning the track on a roller coaster at um, uh, Southampton, but by leaning out the back of the car with the handful of uh, wire wool holding it over the rails. <laughs> that was many, many nice. years ago. But yeah, is that Portland's Park? It was. No, no, it wasn't at Portland's. It was. Um, uh, I can't remember the name. It's a pier. But it's called the jet line of the coaster. It's still there now, but it was um it was right on the seafront. And uh yeah, I was watching this guy going around, no safety restraint down, just leaning out the back with a handful of wire wall, holding it over the rail. That's just taking the rust off first thing in the morning. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's a that's a thing to behold, really, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I would love to see something like that. You know, it wouldn't make me want to go on them. Anymore. I would imagine not. No. <laughs> I don't think that's a selling point. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are other attractions as well. Um, Matt, in your podcast that you have, uh, mm -hmm. you um, you had the episode on the Terminator Two. Yes. Uh, ride. Would you would you call class that as a ride, or is it more like a show that's put put on before you? Yeah, it's uh, it's not a, definitely not a ride. I mean, I would classify it a ride with some kind of movement. It's not. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a show. There's a couple of facets to it. There's a, a pre-show with a single performing actress, and then the show itself is primarily a 3D. It, the unique one about that is it's a 3D movie with a screen that 
goes up and down and lets actors run in and out like the 3D image will kind of go away as the actor is running, portraying one of the people on screen who come out on stage. But it's definitely, to answer your question, a show. I mean, you do not move. You're sitting in a seat with your 3D glasses. So show is a better term for that one. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I I can do them all day every day. You know, that, that's a show. <laughs> I, I can do that. That's so that's what Universal, yeah? Yes. Yes, yes yeah. I, I really enjoyed that one. I really liked the, um, while you're queuing, it is like you're going into a conference. Yes. <laughs> yep, that's exactly. It's, it's, really, it's, it's a really nice way to do it. And, uh... Yeah. Yep, that's one of their, yeah, one of their first, first big ones. Surprise, very surprising it's still there. I, I mean, it's there today. And uh, one of their first big ones where they went to make a, I guess you call it more of an immersive experience out of the entire ride than just wait in line, see the show, and then move on. So it's a really good example of what Universal was trying to do in the early days and has evolved from from there. Yeah. It has the animatronic Terminators that come yep. out the walls at the end as yes. well, which is uh, yep. really cool. <laughs> yeah. So you're sat there with 3D glasses on, and then you have real animatronics come out, out to you as well. You have real animatronics on the sides of the theater, and you have real mm. life people coming in and out of the screen, literally out of the screen. The screen, if you kind of just not pay attention to the movie and watch the screen, you can actually see the doors rise and open as actors run in and out. I mean, I don't recommend it for your first viewing, kind of distracting, but if you go on it a second time, take a look at it, because it's actually a really neat behind-the-scenes thing to, yeah. to catch. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I... That would add more, um, well, just more realism to it. If, right. If you're expecting just a 3D screen and then all of a sudden there's dirty big Terminators walking towards you, you think, <laughs> whoa. He comes, out, he comes out on a motorcycle. I mean, yep. That. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Mm. Right into the arena in amongst the seats. Oh. Or at least he did when I went over it. But that was, uh, that was a long time ago. Oh, it's been around since the nineties, so it's the same one. Yeah, as... I know. Yeah. Well, Back to the Future was still there when I last went. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, wow, so long that's a... <laughs> yeah. that is a while ago. You know, about ten years ago now. Yep. So, Greg, is there anything that you haven't gone on yet? You, you say you've been on over what five hundred rides? So... Over over five hundred coasters. Yeah. Oh, there's still plenty more. Are, are you um... chasing the dragon, as, as it were? <laughs> I used to until I had kids. Then it stopped. <laughs> Okay, I yeah. thought that might be the excuse to go on more, but they don't like them. Oh, they don't? No, they've both been on a couple of small ones, and neither of them are none too keen. And, oh, uh, no. And my my uh, my beloved girlfriend isn't isn't a big fan either. So when did oh, the, man. When did the, the bug deck, hit you? <laughs> the car's going um, against you. I was five. My dad took me on the uh, scenic railway at Margate, which is reopening again soon, which is an old, old wooden coaster built in the 1920s. He took me on that when I was five, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to go on them ever since. Right, okay. And, and just kept here, there, and everywhere, off to the States several, seven or eight times now on various coaster club trips and around Europe. Oh, so you're part of a club? I am, yeah. Oh, yeah. that takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a whole new level of geek. Yeah, that that's proper. You've got a badge and everything with a name tag. I have, and... yeah, yeah, the jacket with my name on it and and all that crap. Following a man, but um, we've, you know, they they've got a good deal with the park. We get exclusive ride sessions before the park opens or after it closes, so you don't have to queue up. Um, you know, behind the scenes access, which is pretty cool. Mm. Oh, but uh, yeah, it's not bad at all. But like I said, the uh, the financial drain that our children. Has put paid for a lot of foreign trips, and the fact that they're not keen on the coasters either isn't of great help. So, how are you going to fill that void then? You know, are you are you just going to force the kids onto these things from now on? Or? No, no, I won't force them. <laughs> I mean, they'll yeah. if they grow up to if they grow up to decide they're going to go on them. So be it. If not, well, they can hold the fucking coats, can't they? <laughs> you say, oh no, no, this is the queue for the toilet. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> this this train takes us to the toilet. It's fine. They can be, as we call them, the bag bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what one, if you could go on something that you haven't been on yet, Greg, what, what would you go on? Um, there's a couple. There's one in um, New Jersey um, called Nitro, um, which I've uh, very much wanted to go on since it opened. Um, not the chance yet. Um, 
and there's one that's not if i could ride one that i would you know never have got to have ridden um there was one called the crystal beach comet um which was pulled down kind of back in the 50s i think and it was supposed to be the most insane wooden coaster ever it was apparently had a nurse station on the exit um to <laughs> wow. assist people get it off <laughs> And this thing was absolute bonk. You used to pull seven and a half, eight G on various turns, and yeah, it was it was totally crazy. But um, yeah, it pulled down a long time ago. Blimey, that's getting up to the point where you need a flight suit to get on it. Yeah, it was. That was yeah, it was short lived, but for the time it was there, it was uh, absolutely insane. Right. So, out of all you three, do you have a preference on like steel coasters or wooden coasters or what? Is there nostalgia in there that you you crave There's wooden coasters for me i actually will s- probably go on a steel first before that but i like i mean i like wooden coasters but my preference is probably steel jim um i think i'm a steel, steel roller coaster guy i mean i think my favorite roller coaster kind of growing up and one of the kind of the biggest and baddest ones at the time in the 80s was at Alton Towers, the corkscrew, which I went on many, many times. And I was, a, you know, as its name was, one of the first loop the loop coasters that actually had a bit of a ride to it. Before that, there'd been the revolution at Blackpool, which just did a loop the loop and then went back, and that was it. Whereas the corkscrew actually had a proper kind of roller coaster course to it as well, and a couple of nice big drops, and um, that was just really fun and fast. and right yeah it's, uh, the the um wooden coaster that they're more they're more like the the train running across the track and then you don't get the loops on them do you mm, yeah, building technic- uh, uh, with loops but yeah on a true traditional wooden coaster no there's two yeah. here uh one in Branson Missouri that I know there's probably more than two outlaw run which is basically a steel track on a wooden frame, and now they've done that to... Uh, oh, I forget which one. They did one, the one at Magic Mountain. I forget the... Yeah, uh, Coloss- yeah Colossus. This, the Colossus there. Yes, it's called... They changed it to yeah. Twisted Colossus. So Twi- it's, Twisted Colossus, yeah. And they've yeah. done it to the Cyclone at Six Flags New England as well. Oh, did they? they there too. Okay, yeah. so... I mean, those yeah. are... So the six, six Flags are doing it to a lot of their rides, but then the a lot of the... I mean, I guess you could call those hybrids, but it's basically yeah, they are. I think so. Yeah, steel steel track that is it running is. everything. Steel coaster, really. Yeah, I prefer the traditional wooden ones, but that's just me. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I enjoy them. My wife cannot stand those, so those are always kind of towards the end on the if we have time list. So I don't get to go <laughs> on every one when I go to a park. <laughs> oh no! Well, what about um? log flumes because this comes into that that sort of thing as well um now i i have a fear of, once again i have a fear of these uh type rides and i think it comes from i, I was in chessington and these are the lamest ones you can get <laughs> but yeah it, i think it's the one that princess diana was uh pictured in with the the royal kids as well at one point but i remember going up there with my parents and it's that long chug up. It's, there's no clicking on it. You're kind of on a conveyor belt. Yeah. And you can see other yeah. people screaming to their death over the other <laughs> side. <laughs> and I think that's what puts me off. But we went on it, and I think my dad was behind Living me. My, my mum was in front of me, and my brother was also in front of me when we went on this ride. And as as we went over the t- tipping edge, which is possibly one of the most scariest things in the world you know you're not falling just yet but you can see where you're going to be in about 30 seconds and we were just going over there and i was leaning forward everyone else in my family was leaning back and as we went over the top i i always tense up i grip and my body just goes rigid it's it's i it's uncontrollable i'm uncontrollable rigidness all the way through my whole body and yet my whole family's like arms are waving in the air and you know <laughs> my brother's elbow came back and whacked me in the face <laughs> oh <laughs> and 
you know, for that 30 seconds, I hated his guts so much <laughs> because he was having fun <laughs> while my face was, you know, throbbing and almost bleeding. You know, I was probably about nine, maybe eight at this time. So, you know, they have no other consequence apart from, fuck me, this is brilliant. This is the best thing in the world. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, no, you've just hit me in the face and I'm doing this thing I don't really want to do. And oh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> so anyway, my long-winded question. Do you guys like log flumes? Uh, that's probably on my list. Yeah. Uh, if there's more time after the time that we saved for the other stuff, my wife didn't want to do list actually. So, I mean, they're... They're okay. They always. I don't know if you, you guys experience this. They're the, they're the longest line for anything to any park I go to over here, and it's for yeah. a long wait to go up a hill, float around, and fall. It just doesn't seem the payoff doesn't seem worth the wait. Yeah, we've hang on. They're okay to cool down, but uh... we've just had <laughs> um, Sean from the Question Podcast phone in. Sean, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Can you hear me? I I can. Yes. Oh my God! Technology Hello, Sean. works. How are you guys? Yeah, not too bad. Good, but yeah. Going and through my fears at the moment. I, I I've noted. I've been listening. Oh my goodness. Um, am I? Do you guys hear any background noise or any craziness? Because Melissa's using the quote unquote good computer right now. This is not. The good <laughs> uh, no, you're right. We can hear a fan, no, but I, I I just uh, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we can hear uh, you fine, though. I'll destroy the quality of your podcast, so I'll make my, my comments quick. Um, roller coasters. I, have a very, I think I have a interesting story to tell, and, and you'll probably think I'm crazy at the end of it for not doing something I should have done, something that everyone, when they hypothetically talk about things like this, swears they'll do. Um, when I was little, my mother instilled it in me for some stupid reason that roller coasters were scary and I should never go on them. My brother and sister both loved them. I, for whatever reason, she chose me, decided, oh no, you don't want to do it. Trust me, you're not going to like them. And like an idiot, as a kid, I listened to them. Um, and I have a distinct memory of where this took place. It was at a uh, theme park called Hershey Park in Hershey, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Uh, owned by you're where I grew up. I know exactly what you're talking about. Excellent. Uh, owned by the Hershey Corporation, people who make the chocolate, uh, as uh, those of you across the seas like to call it, American Death Chocolate. Um, <laughs> but, but we enjoy it. Anyway, uh, that notwithstanding, she beat it into my head that I shouldn't want to go on. The ride that I specifically wanted to go on was this ride called the Super Duper Looper, which, <laughs> when I was a kid, was a big, scary roller coaster. By today's standards, it's pretty much a kid's coaster. Um, Anyway, for years I didn't go on roller coasters. It wasn't until I was about 20 years old that I went on my first roller coaster uh, at the Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags, uh, which we call uh, Great Adventure here in New Jersey. Um, and, and I immediately became an enthusiast, and I went on roller coasters uh, wherever I found them. I, to this day, absolutely love uh, the thrill of, of a good roller coaster. The bigger the better, the faster the better, the scarier the better. But I'd never gone back and ridden the Super Duper Looper until about 10 years ago uh, when I happened to be in Hershey Park again. And I said, oh, you know, for old time's sake and, and to kind of right what I felt was a childhood wrong, let me ride this thing. I get on it, and I guess because it was an older roller coaster, uh, the, the, they didn't get the better ride operators. It probably was a, a starter ride for a lot of uh, young kids. The girl who was checking the lap belts, whenever the lap belts came down, because this ride only required a lap belt, the girl who was riding the lap, uh, checking the lap belts was very lackadaisical. She just did a quick walk down and tapped each, belt, each one. Mine apparently did not come down all the way. And as the train is leaving the station it it it's like going up like it's not securely fastened i am not i it's just me in this seat testing the law of centrifugal force in a few seconds um and i'm screaming my head off like the bar isn't down but you know i'm not i'm not secure i'm not secure whatever it was i, I was just screaming my head off that i'm gonna die 
And the guy next to me, of course, made it better because he looks at me. He's like, "You're gonna die." <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and, and he he seemed partially excited by the prospect of watching. <laughs> Uh, which, yeah, um, in, in retrospect, I, I should have had words with that guy. But at the time, I was just so paralyzed with fear because I was like, okay, now I'm going to find out if science really works. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, because I'm talking to you, it does work. Uh, and now why I didn't immediately sue the pants off Hershey, and, and I don't own the American Death Chocolate, I can't say. <laughs> uh, that's one of my giant regrets in life. That, But I was just so happy to be alive after it was oh. over. I just like walked away from that, didn't go on a single thing the rest of the day, <laughs> uh, and and look back on that as like you know one of those moments that uh, that those defining moments where I, I am excited to have gone through it. It's a great story to tell, but every time I tell the story, everyone always tells me the same thing: "You fucking idiot! Why didn't you do?" <laughs> and that's my roller coaster story. Nice. Oh man. Awesome. Guys, I've got to go. Brilliant. Um, That's all right. No worries. Goodbye. No worries, mate. I've got to go to work. Um, Sean, if you get a chance, tell the guys about Action Park. Oh, my God. Action Park. It's the greatest. Oddly enough, even though I I talk about surviving that roller coaster story, I put my life in peril every time I went to Action Park by choice. Yeah, Uh, you and everybody else that went there. Yeah, and everybody else. it It was a test of man. It was like... You know those like tribal tests of manhood that you know you're going to either die or survive this and feel you've you've come into your own, you've become a man. Um, well, a lot of us to Action Park and 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 had that experience because Action Park was the most unsafe theme park ever created. Um, I think it was a way of um, it was weed a way of weeding out your weedier children. I you took them to Action Park, and if, if they came if they came back alive, you knew they were keepers. I think yes. I think I think there was almost a almost a sacrificial. It was evolutionary design in Action Park. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was meant to weed out the weak ones, definitely. Um, just imagine. It work. Imagine a theme park. Uh, it was a water park uh, that ran on the philosophy of ah, throw safety out the window. Just <laughs> just go for it. Uh, the best ride for me at Action Park, and take your pick, every single one of them was dangerous and, and had had the legitimate possibility of death, and there were deaths every year at Action Park. My favorite was the uh, the Alpine Slide, which was, um, imagine a, a toboggan race, or a luge, I should say, uh, except there's no ice, it's just concrete, and you're it's just put concrete trough. It's a crocky trough, exactly, where you just sit in this little tiny car. I wouldn't even fit in one of them today, but you just sit in this tiny little rolly thing that you have full control of. You have full control of the brake, although no one ever used it, so there might as well not have been one. Um, <laughs> it didn't even have brakes. It was just a fucking stick. Yeah, it was a stick. <laughs> you, you pull back to slow down, but really it just kind of it gave you the slightest illusion of safety, but it really served no purpose. It was decorative. Uh, and the goal was to go as fast as you could and when you hit a hill, to catch as much air as you could. But if you didn't stick the land, you were either breaking an arm, breaking a leg, or you possibly coming off that ride paralyzed. Uh, I, to this day, still have scars from Action Park. And I wear them proudly. Oh, wow. Yes, we di- people died in the wave pool every year. People got electric. They had um, one kayak ride that had, it actually had... Um, there were there were wires for the park that ran through the water, so people died of a <laughs> pretty much every year. Uh, it was the most insane. How it didn't get shut down earlier mm-hmm. is beyond me. Uh, and it eventually was. Um, it eventually was. They changed the name to Mountain Creek years later, um, and and they did make the park safer. They did finally come in and ruin the fun. Um, but years later, now just like within the past two years. The original owners of Action Park um, took a majority stake in ownership again, and they changed the name back to Action Park. So, even though it's no longer as, as frightening a place, um, it, it, it still now exists, at least in name only. Oh, sorry, the other great ride, the ride that ended Action Park, the ride that finally made the authorities come in and say, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. They made a, a looping water slide. <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> sort of. It, didn't exactly, it didn't exactly, yeah. It kind of was more like a get stuck at the bottom of it. Yeah. Down. 
slam into you. Uh, <laughs> that was the ride that finally did it. That finally broke actually. A they, they, kind of, they kind of forgot to take into account how the human body actually bends when they made that loop. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 loop, is, that loop was about ten feet across. It, it was, it, but you know what? I give them credit for the effort. You know, they they were <laughs> they, they were just trying to kill them faster. <laughs> they wanted to up those totals every summer. It, it was it's, kind of like it was kind of like the new Jurassic World. It's like you know we just make it scarier and the greater chance of death, more people are going to want to come. Yeah. And only in the seventies and eighties could that have worked. It's true. <laughs> you, you say water loop. Now, that doesn't compute to me, you know, water going uphill and across and sticking to the surface that it wants to be on. Because it, exactly, it shouldn't work, but it, they tried it anyway, those crazy bastards. Is this more like the, uh, do you remember Jackass, they had that loop where they tried to get Bam Margera to do the, the skateboard around the loop? Oh, no, this is much worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I have, uh, a, I found a picture, let me see if I can throw it in Yeah. Let's see. Elton, they used to test it by sending down crash dummies, and those crash dummies would come out in pieces at the bottom. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, it was, was so it was it was like they they got all the spare parts from from all the other water slides that had been built, and thought, well, what can we knock up with this? <laughs> it, it was like, did, did you ever play Roller Coaster Tycoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Tried to build stupid rides just to kill your 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 visitors. <laughs> right. In real life, that was action for <laughs> it, it looks like something out of Itchy and Scratchy. It really does. <laughs> it was. It was Itchy and Scratchy Land. Yeah, that's it. That's in a real life. Analogy. Perfect it's, analogy. It's absolutely amazing that that place, like, it, it holds such a special place in my heart just for the fact that it shouldn't have existed, but did. Oh, <laughs> and, right. and I survived it. That's, you know, that's the thing. You know, no one, no one wants to be in a plane crash, but if you do survive one, you're going to talk about that the rest of your life like it's the greatest thing ever. Oh, yeah, you're going to dine out on that all the time, aren't you? You know. Well, I've, I've only been there the once, but that was to take the kids from summer camp there for a day out. I imagine what the parents would have thought knowing that their <laughs> part was taking their kids to Action Park. How much of the herd did you thin out on that day? Uh, we brought them all back. <laughs> oh, success. <laughs> Yeah, we should have tried harder. They come back with, you know, shits and <laughs> the scrapes and shit cut all over them. And it's amazing, too, because the park also got away with things you'd never get away with today. People are too pampered today. Back then, you had, like, you'd go on the water raft ride. You had to carry this giant tube, like, up a mountain, pretty much, to yeah. get to, to, get to the, the, the water ride that lasted maybe about, you know, five minutes. Yeah. And then you'd walk the goddamn tube back up again, like... People wouldn't stand for that today, but back then where it was like, yes, I'm going to do this. Wow. What a play. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've got to go, guys. I need to get to work. So it's been a pleasure. All right. Yes, no, it is. And I will catch you later. Thank you very much, Greg. Cheers. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Greg. Bye. I, I am going to take off as well, gentlemen. It is a pleasure to, to be on and to have you guys back. Uh, long live the lab. No worries. Thank you very much <laughs> for calling in, mate. Man, thanks, guys. Sean. All right, man. Bye. 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 Right. Talking of um, stuff that is ridiculously bad, I'm going to stick this link in the chat room for you guys. Did any of you see this? Uh, I think it came up yesterday. And we had, uh, it's a catapult ride. Oh, I've not seen oh. this. I mean, I've seen this ride. There's a ride here that's a permanent attraction not far from the house, but I've not seen what this headline says this did. Well, Take a moment to watch the video, because right. you know, I guarantee you, you will not be going on this after. I, I will talk you talk you know, the listeners through this. Um, what you have is uh, one of these bungee cages where you're catapulted up into the air, and we've we've all seen the videos where um, the the little kids get in there and they're not strapped in ever you know, uh. properly enough, and you know they're fired up into the air, and we all laugh at the kids' terrified faces, and this is a very similar cage with the two bungees on either side that's going to throw you through the occupants maybe a hundred feet into the air i suppose I'm not, I'm not too sure how high these things go and at the very last second the bungees on the uh capsule's right hand side give way just before they're due to release this thing into the air now 
I'm sure it would have lasted one more ride, and but you do not want <laughs> to see that happen, do you? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the scariest thing in the world. I'm now. I'm. It's like I'm still not at the snap point yet. I'm like desperately anticipating it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hang on until you see that because it is well worth it. Yeah, I don't dare scrub forward in case I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a two minute video. Not even. I can hear the anticipation already. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, Whoa! Tightening. tightening. Wow! Ooh. Man, not only is that frightening for the ride, but if he got hit by that, oh my god, could have snapped his arm. It, it, it's terrifying, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Holy shit! Now I'm assuming in Jim's day they would have just sellotaped that back up and said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> right. no, it would have done definitely. <laughs> or just maybe use the other bungee on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> just take those two on so each back side. in my day. That. That would have been the most popular ride for the rest of the summer. <laughs> See, I mean, nowadays... The summer, the summer before I worked at that park, there'd been a death on the roller coaster. It was Ooh. called the, Sta- the Texas Stampede. And it was because some idiot had undone his safety belt. It was the old stalk, like airplane belts. Mm, mm-hmm. he, he'd undone it and stood up. And um, managed to time he's standing up. So as he went down a dip, his head collided with an over a hanging beam and it took his head clean off <laughs> oh <laughs> um took a long time to clean up that ride the, 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 <laughs> on the entire length of track the guys who'd been working there some before but the summer i was at that ride was popular unbelievable and you could hear <laughs> all the people talking about it some guy died on this last year we've got to go on that we gotta go <laughs> that's, that's, that's the action park principle in action uh, yeah yeah see now Things in, um, I I don't know if, Matt, you've heard about this, but things in theme parks have taken a bit of a dark turn recently. Have you heard the events of here? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was, um, we are actually, we're not actively planning a trip, but that is something we're going to do in the next two years is get to, get to that Dalton Towers and maybe, maybe we'll put another year on that wait at this point until they get (laughs) a couple more things fixed in the, up the maintenance. It it might be worth, yeah. yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it might be worth your while. See, I've spent the day at Alton Towers with my missus, and this was before we had kids. And bearing in mind, I don't like these sort of things, as I've said before, but we walked up there. We, we stayed in a bit, uh, bed and breakfast just around the corner from there, got a taxi from the bed and breakfast to Alton Towers, and then proceeded to walk around all of Alton Towers looking up. <laughs> and I think we queued up for maybe three or four rides which were the, the tamest ones there, went on the bubble works. That was that was very, very good fun. I, I highly recommend that to any thrill seeker that they want to, you know, go in a tunnel <laughs> on a boat with bubbles blowing around them. That's brilliant. Um apart from I'm that not quite sure that'll quantify my entire cost to get over there for just that ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but well I'm 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 quite happy to put myself up for a hat stand or coat <laughs> coat stand okay. for you. I don't mind doing that. I, I'll leave I'll tell you what, I'll even come along, I'll meet you there, I'll queue up for you. And oh, then, there you go. No. And, and then you go off and do another ride and then by the time you get back, you're five people from the front. So yeah, you know, the... go on then. <laughs> that then sounds I'll, good. <laughs> I'll go queue up somewhere else. It'll be brilliant. I mean plus in England you also get things like this happening. Um like uh summer last summer <laughs> At another British theme park, they had another bloody accident <laughs> of where, uh, like Water Valley, where a deer strayed onto the track of the roller coaster oh, and got God. decapitated. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> Covering everyone on the coaster in deer blood. <laughs> I'm, that's, I, I think this rings a bell. I'm actually surprised I haven't heard more of this where I grew up, because I grew up right in the middle of where uh, the last gentleman to call, I forgot his name already, where he where he was talking about that Hershey Park. There's another park called mm-hmm. Dorney Park. There's Six Flags. That's all in the Pocono, the base of the Pocono Mountain Range, which is all wooded area and a lot of wildlife. I can't believe I've not heard more about things like this in, <laughs> while I was growing up. I'd imagine um, venison was on the, on the yeah, table. Yeah, right? <laughs> there was an unusual <laughs> amount of game meat at the food store. At the food courts, I don't know why. <laughs> See, I, I've heard these sort of stories where people have climbed over catch fences to get and high-five people on roller coasters. You know, 
are, are some of these stories really true that people have been decapitated, lost mm. hands, lost fingers and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. There's a couple instances of people jumping fences around here to first the dumbest thing, like to grab a hat, a hat that I mean, just go spend the $10 or whatever it was to buy another one for the dumbest thing, jump the fence at the wrong time. And as they are caught between can't get out of where they're going and the ride's coming and bam that's it it's it's happened there's an idiot that jumped up speaking of a, a, lo, a log flume which seems the most one of the most safest rides to be on some idiot jumped out of one the one at disney the uh, splash mountain jumped out got in the water got struck in the head and not completely decapitated but killed him and yeah people just do dumb things i mean i, I think we're talking natural selection at this point not really the fall of the ride <laughs> oh yeah yeah you know if you're gonna do that then it is natural selection. It is Darwin at action, really. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been on these rides and taken a camera with you then? You know, talking about decapitation and losing hats and stuff yeah. like that. You know, th there's a lot more people with these phone cameras. Oh, my God, I sound so old. Phone cameras. What the <laughs> hell was that? <laughs> iPhones. That's what I meant. Um, and GoPros and such. So, you know. Would that appeal to you to take like a, a phone on there and maybe video your experiences on there? I used to a long time ago, actually before before uh, smartphones and any any camera and any phone. When you know, I'd have to buy a something that fit in the best I could into both my hands that I could kind of cover them and hide it under my shirt. But now it's now it's too much work because there's actually metal detectors at Universal Studios for the big roller coasters, the things where where they can fly off and out of your pocket now. So oh. I've given up that given up that hobby a long time ago. It's just too much trouble. And uh, people people actually arrange with the parks. These these theme park bloggers arrange with the parks to actually mount GoPros and get much better video than I would anyway. So it's not even worth doing for me. And it's not, not worth getting a, a lifetime ban from a park if you do get caught because I enjoy it too much. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen pictures of people duct taping um, phones to their hands. But I, I don't think that would wash somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not the most, uh, yeah, not the best best video of the ride online. I would imagine. Yeah, it also reminds me. Jim would know this. Um, Matt, have you ever heard of a man called Jimmy Savile? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jim. Was this in the eighties? Or I'm talking about the. Um, uh, was it the scout troop that went on the roller coasters? Oh, I know who this yes. is now. I just did a, I did a search online. I know. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. I, I do know. I, yeah. Um, when you're Googling Jimmy Savile, be very careful. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not going any further. <laughs> I, I work for a, a European company, and when this broke, uh, when the bad news of him broke, what, a year or two ago, they filled me in on the details of who this was. So I do know who you're talking about now. Yep. That, that's, <laughs> I lo love the way you say the bad news about yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping hell. <laughs> but yeah, I, I remember this. This was a staple part of our diet on TV, watching these. It was every year this video would be uh, wheeled out and shown on TV on the, on the top 10 funniest moments on British TV. And now it's, I don't know, it's just kids getting covered in um, drinks and stuff like that, isn't it? But, <laughs> you know, do you reckon that would be allowed now? I well, think they probably, probably wouldn't allow it now. It'd be too, it would be too much of a hazard. Uh, um, I mean, because it, it was on a program, for anyone who doesn't know, called so Jim Will Fix It, where kids wrote in and he made their wishes come true. But they're always, like, really... Well, the kind of wishes I had as a growing lad. Um, he never answered my reply for lots of hookers and coke. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, but <laughs> well, this is uh, well, uh, apparently uh, he didn't ask the right way from the story I know. <laughs> well, this is true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, um, this boy scout troop you know, wrote in and said, you know, could we have a picnic on the? Uh, was it, well, it was on the Revolution at Blackpool, wasn't it? On the first uh, loop, the loop I coaster. Think so, yeah. Uh, and, and so they did this, and so you know. The footage is hilarious. It's probably on YouTube of you know, kids that are opening like, like you know, bottles of bottles of soda and lemonade and coca, you know, while traveling at a high speed and all the liquid just you know, streaming out behind them and packets of crisps just exploding and sandwiches just being blown away by centrifugal force. Yeah. That ought to check out. That does um, sound actually pretty but then, funny. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it was it did it just turned up for years and years because it was just such it was funny and slapstick and surreal. Um but I mean, now I can't see them, them doing it because it would just be too much of a hazard. They'd be, they'd be fearing lawsuits left, right, and yeah. centre. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a, and a food hygiene inspection. <laughs> yeah. with, with, like, burgers on track and stuff like that, flipping out. Yeah, if yeah. the wrong leaves can stop British Rail, then, yeah, a burger on track should be able to stop a roller coaster <laughs> ride. <laughs> but there was always always that person that, you heard you'd see like a Mary Rose um, ride where you have the boat swing from left to right to left to right constantly, and there was always that person that had their money fall out on there as well, and you'd you'd hear the screams as they go up, and then it comes down the screams as they go up and come down, and then all of a sudden you hear shit, and then the the plinky plonky plinky plonky of money <laughs> scattering everywhere <laughs> and you would end up with herds of kids just hanging around these things waiting for the money to drop it's a a, a new version of the wishing well but, yeah. <laughs> but you weren't allowed underneath the boat to get these things but i do remember seeing that and i i think was it my mum was actually one of them people as well i'm pretty sure my mum lost about 8 quid <laughs> in small change on one of them things or it, it could have been like a um a aladdin's flying carpet which was pretty much the same sort of thing but held up by four struts and so you would you would do circles but your your where you're actually sitting the board would stay parallel to the floor and so you'd swing one way and then it would go anti-clockwise and then clockwise and anti-clockwise and yeah she lost tons and tons of money on them things <laughs> but yeah they're, they're the sort of things that I, I suppose i look out for you know like we said earlier on like the the where where's waldo type thing right right yes yeah that would that's something to put on a scavenger hunt I've, that's a big big pointer uh yeah someone actually sees something fall from a ride that should be at least 10 points on my scavenger hunt <laughs> You're gonna to have to put deer on there now. And oh hats. God, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You'll be reloading that list as soon as you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Do we have anything more to say on um, roller coasters or amusements at this point? Uh yes oh, and no. I mean, I could say I could talk endlessly about it, but it would be probably way too boring. So. Oh no no no! Well, it, it's just me that I I don't have the um experiences you know i've never really wanted to go to these places so I, I don't have the experience of going on numerous amounts of rides and getting the buzz off of them so that's where i'm falling down on this okay. on this what subject. ride what ride have you been on that you really enjoyed though that you might like to see again oh well i i don't know i i did mention the vampire ride and it's, oh, okay. it's because it, it's just an easy ride but i I get more fun now going to these places, watching other people have fun. It's it's like the cliche thing about Christmas, you know, uh, giving is better than receiving. Bollocks, getting is wicked as well. We all know that. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, watching watching my son who was he was gagging to get onto these rides, and uh, we took him down to Portland's Park, and it is a very tame place to say the least. Uh, while we was down there, I was staying with my cousins, and we said, you know, would you like to come to Portland's Park? And he went, yeah, okay, let's let's go. So we were all going to go as a big group of family. Then we looked on the internet and saw how much it was. And my cousin, at that point, bailed out and said, bollocks, I used to climb the fence and get in there for free. I am not paying £40 <laughs> per person to get in there. So, okay, fine. So we went as a, a group of four, just my family. And the thrill that he had going on these rides because they were his first roller coasters and him the, the fun that I had when he was dragging me onto these things you know bearing in mind I, I, I didn't want to be on it and it's all through gritted teeth of yeah sure let's go on that again and again <laughs> and yeah, but the fun that he was having was more than enough for me to, you know, maybe go on it once or twice. Okay. Uh, 
But yeah, I, I don't really get that thrill of, of anything else. In the meantime, he's been to, was it Chessington? Yeah, he's been on the vampire ride. And he said that was lame. And I just <laughs> hung my head in shame. Was like, okay, Aww. fine. <laughs> he had fun on it. But he was, yeah, dad, come on. You got a man up, man. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're just not for me. They really okay. aren't. Jim, Jim, have you got anything who's else left, to add? I've lost track who's left on the call now. Oh, it's it's me, Jim, Jim? and you. Is that who's still here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to ask Matt, actually, what are yes, your no. top tips for avoiding huge uh, parks? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Matt. Are you still Hello? there? Oh, I think we're losing Matt. Jim, you still there? I'm Does still there, yeah. Me? <laughs> Matt? Hello, Matt. Can you hear us? No, he, I think he's dropping off. No. Oh, what a shame. I'll tell you what, I'll call him back. Okie dokie. I'll, I'll add him on again. Hang on a second. So my top tip if you're visiting a thing park is go there, get there early, and then go to the rides at the far end of the park. Because the na- human nature dictates that people will all start queuing at the rides nearest the entrance. Mm. Got the shortest queue, go right to the back. Go right to the other end of the park. and start... <laughs> Yeah, I, I would go with that. Matt, are you still there? Yeah, I am now. I dropped out for a little bit. I, 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 I heard the end of what Jim just said. Oh, okay, cool. Go on, Jimmy's going to ask him something. Oh, I was going to ask Matt, what was his top tips for avoiding queues for rides? <laughs> You hit my number one. In fact, I was write, <laughs> writing an article for, it's not for rides, it's for, I don't know if you guys heard of Halloween Horror Nights down here? Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the, um, I'm writing it for, uh, we do a podcast just on the history of that, and I was writing an article for that, but it holds the same. It is go to the complete opposite end of the park, of the, en- of the entrance, I should say, and start there, especially, or, or if you're, whatever particular ride is over in that area, that is... That is the best thing to do. Don't go. That stands for anything. Don't go to the first restaurant. Go, don't go to the first bar. Don't go to the first anything <laughs> at an entrance of a theme park. Go to the opposite, about as far away from the entrance as you can get. And uh, yeah, that 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 is the number one tip. The um, the this whole new facet of a second pass with the express pass and fast pass though is just something that is so hard not to take advantage of, and that's really what we do when we go to a park for a first time we end up buying that too so my tips are waning because now i'm kind of cheating by buying these front of the line <laughs> passes but the uh yeah the uh, the opposite end of the entrance is always and i think will always be the number one tip mm. see i've heard some of these parks that they're, they're shaped in the pretty much a circle and it is you, you have the tendency to turn left as you go into the park and I've heard the tip of turn right. Mm-hmm. And then you can pretty much beat everyone to the right-hand side of the park, whereas everyone else is going to the left-hand side of the park and then working their way across. And so, you know, that would be my tip if you're going to a circular park, which is, I don't know if that's a good tip or not. <laughs> it, I, actually, it is. I can picture that working with both Universal Parks. It would work with Magic Kingdom. Hollywood Studios is a weird layout. I'm not sure about that one, but it would work with Epcot and it would work from what I can remember with that Animal Kingdom. So of the six big ones here, I can attest that for at least four, if not five, that is absolutely correct. So that's another good that's another good one. Oh, okay, cool. There you go. Yeah. Sweet. Jim, have you got any tips? Um Don't die? No. Don't yeah, don't die. Don't look behind the scenes, it'll <laughs> terrify you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've got kids don't let them climb all over the poor sods in the character costumes <laughs> yeah. uh, we had one at Frontierland called Frontierland Fred and it's nowhere near as hot in Morecambe in the summer as it is in Orlando um, and that guy, you kept passing out from heat exhaustion So, <laughs> ooh, that's you know what, that's funny you say that this is something that a lot of people don't know anyone that is coming in summer in Orlando first, you're stupid to come to Orlando in summer it's just too hot, but if you do 
a lot a, a, a thing a lot of people don't know is that the counter service like the counter service food not not the restaurants where you get a table but where you go up to the counter with your tray and whatnot a lot of those if not all of them at the major theme parks here will give you a cup of ice water during these summer heats to stay hydrated so take advantage of that don't don't keep don't get dehydrated because you don't want to pay the exorbitant amount for a bottle of water. Go into those places and get your free water because they don't. It costs more for them to scoop you off the ground passed out than it does to give you a free cup of water. Ah, <laughs> good tips. Because uh, th- all my daughter drinks is water. She doesn't drink okay. anything else apart from chocolate milkshake and water. And you know, God knows how she survived this long. I do not know, <laughs> but it's great. You know, no rotting teeth or anything. But yeah, um, yeah, keep bottled up, kids. There we go. Safety tips and everything on here. Right. Okay. I think I'm going to draw it to a close because my uh, knowledge of roller coasters is waning now. Um, Matt, would you like to plug the shit out of everything that you do, please? <laughs> I can't do everything. It'll take too long. But uh, I will say everything we do is at Neozaz, Neozaz.com. And um, I'm not sure what show. I'm guessing Star Wars and Characters is probably what the first one you would listen to and had you contact me is, is my guess. Is that right? Yeah, it was. Well, uh, I was introduced to Star Wars and Character by uh, Anthony James. Oh, yeah. Is, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, big thank you to Anthony for pointing at me in this direction. And then I've gone I've gone from Star Wars in character. I did the uh, Matt Goes Goofy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've, I, I just, it, it almost, almost inspired me to run. Oh, not, wow. <laughs> not <cool>. quite, <laughs> but No, that's almost. fine. That's, yeah. <laughs> that, you know, that, that's close enough as far right. as I'm concerned. I've also done um, Pass the Popcorn uh, okay. and... I I don't do the trailer park boys because I can't get along with that. So oh yeah, that's that's that's. I mean, that is a companion show. I mean, if you don't watch the show, there's no point listening to it. So I don't blame anyone for that. That's yeah. that's for sure. And, but yeah, that's. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And uh, uh, attraction uh, attraction obsession. God, okay. Tongue twister, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Everything you mentioned is that everything's at neozaz dot com. All those shows and more. And uh, anyone that's listening to this. For the theme park aspect, the the two that we have related to that is attraction obsession, like you mentioned. That's a that's a bit of a beast. So there's not many of them because it takes so long to produce. But I am trying. The other one to that companion of that is Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights, where we talk about the Halloween Horror Nights Universal Studios. It's it's collectively everyone that I do shows with on all the other shows you mentioned come down here in October and we have a blast at that. So those those are the two theme park related ones. But there's a ton of other stuff. It's basically not even basically it is a bunch of friends that have known each other for decades that are recording themselves catching up with each other every week just happens to be about a particular subject on whatever show you pick so we have a lot of fun and a lot of people seem to enjoy it which is awesome that's great so but uh that's yeah that's it everything and that and more i should say is at newsaz.com yeah and i would highly recommend absolutely everything coming out of that network you know, hold my hands up, just go for it and just dive in and <laughs> absorb as much as you can. Oh, well, thank you very much. No worries. Jim, also plug the shit out of your stuff. <laughs> right. Um, you can hear me every week on my own show, Hypnagoria, um, where currently I'm still knee deep in a huge Christopher Lee retrospective. Um, and I talk about um, weird stuff, basically. Horror related, but not exclusively horror. I do lots of comic y stuff and sci fi stuff and whatever takes my fancy, really. And you can find that on iTunes at Geek Planet Online and at um, other places too, probably. I've forgotten. <laughs> and you can also hear me every week on the, uh, <laughs> along with Elton, on the Black Dog podcast every week, uh, where we review classic movies and then a not so classic movie. Yes. And uh, you can also hear me well done, on uh, Witless for the Defense. <laughs> also on Geek Planet Online, where we put your guilty pleasure movies on trial. Yes. Oh, and I can also say, Matt, if you, if, do you have any guilty pleasure movies that no one else really enjoys? Uh, the one off the top of my head is... Oh, I don't remember the year. I think it's a late '90s movie, Rocket Man, with Harlan Williams. It's a terrible Disney family-esque 
the uh, Disney dirty comedy. And it, you know, of course, you know, is not dirty, but it's uh, I don't know why it makes me laugh so damn much. My wife cannot stand when I put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go to the HMV and look for dirty Disney from now. Well, on. <laughs> I know it's I was like, that's that's the worst. Is, I mean, there's, there's dirty movies and there's dirt. Then there's Disney trying to be dirty. It's fart jokes. That's as far as they go. They, they cross that line and think it's hilarious. That's that's re- and it, it there's a long sequence of fart jokes. So. Yeah, well, that sort of movie is what uh, myself, Jim, and the Lord Chief Justice, uh, Chris Johnson, put on trial. And then we, we talk about the movies and then decide whether they are fit for adult consumption or oh, should gotcha. be burned into the middle of the sun. So <laughs> I just looked it up on IMDb. It's 97, and it actually has a 5.9 rating on IMDb, which I is I find surprisingly high. I expected to see it in the 2 or 3 range. <laughs> Excellent. Well, can I say thank you very much for, for joining us on here, uh, Matt? Oh, yeah, it's my pleasure. No, absolutely excellent. And Jim, thank you very much again, as always. My pleasure. Right. And to the people left in the chat room, um, thank you very much for joining us in there. Sorry, I'm not very good at that. I can only do one thing at once. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> I'd crash the shit out of this thing. Um even though you've heard it live, doesn't mean you get out of downloading it from iTunes, you cheeky little cheapsteaks. So please, once it's released, <laughs> go there, download it. You don't have to listen to it. You can just download <laughs> it. It's fine. And uh, That is yeah. a pitch I've never tried. That is brilliant. <laughs> I will be doing that on my shows now. <laughs> See, bleeding across the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... Uh, People in the chat room, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll catch you next time. And I'm going to press stop on the recording now and then chat with these two guys offline. offline. So I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See, they aren't ride operators, office servers. They're all cast members. Correct. Ah. Yes, I mean, uh, at the Tin Pot um, <laughs> theme park I worked on, it was a, it was a cowboy theme, pe- theme park called Frontierland, um, run by crooks <laughs> and incompetence. They had the goal to show us, for our staff training, a Disney training video circa about 1970. Which was kind of hilarious compared to you know, being shown to a room of like ex cons, ne'er do wells, and, and <laughs> broke students who were working there for the summer, which I was. And uh, you, know, you know, this whole thing that you know, you, you're all part of the cast, you're all part of a one big production. <laughs> you, you have to play your role helping people's dreams come true. Um, which I imagine, you know, now actually, you know. Um, that probably doesn't play probably just as well to disgruntled disemployees in Florida as it does to uh, disin- disin- disgruntled employees in uh, in the north of England. Oh, yes. oh I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is it about the rides that you do? You crave the rides, or do you just enjoy the atmosphere when you go to these sort of places? I'm about the rides. I I mean the the atmosphere is pretty impressive. The things, the, the the new areas that are opening are, they are stunning. I can't take that away from it. But if there's not a good ride within that atmosphere, there's no reason for me to go. So I'm always looking for the next ride, be it a mechanical achievement, be it going faster or higher or upside down more than the last one or something inside that's technically never been done. That's what I'm always chasing after right down here and pretty much everywhere we go. Wow, and do you, do you get like a massive buzz off of them? Uh, I enjoy them. I I wouldn't say I get. I, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know that I get that much of a rush off of it. I get the rush during the ride. It's it's impossible to control my adrenaline. But when it's over, pretty much by the time I'm out of the gift shop, it's gone. So it's 
I don't know. Maybe I am chasing some kind of dragon on these that I'm not aware of because it goes so fast. I, that could be a possibility. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I would so dearly love to to want that craving. Yeah, you know, flipping out. It sounds like I want an addiction on them. But so you I, don't you don't enjoy them like as a physical experience either? Because I you what you explained about not liking it, you certainly explained a visit to a park that is <laughs> certainly cumbersome and can get annoying real quick. But you you don't physically enjoy being on these rides either. It's it's the the thing of not being in control. Mm, and mm. it's now I right okay let, let, let's chop it down a little bit more. Um, I can't drive in the car with my parents anymore okay. because everyone and welcome to the Shonky Lab once again. Uh, I'm Ultimate McManus and this week I am joined by Matt. Hello Matt. Yes, oh hello. I didn't I so, every it seems every other show decides to say introduce me by first and last or just first name. So I was I guess I was off uh, my track there. I was expecting last name which is <laughs> Part of that delay, so uh, I hello. Do, I do apologize for that. that no, is... no, no. It, last me, it's not necessary. I just get in a, a, apparently a rhythm I didn't realize I was in until just now. Oh, okay, fair enough. No, it's me. It's my poor introductions to these sort of things. <laughs> I am pro- proper bobbins at this sort of thing. But you know, no worries. We'll 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 carry on. We've also got Jim. Hello, and we've got Greg with the rubbish Skype. <laughs> Greg, wow, that's real bad. <laughs> it is really bad. Greg, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Okay, right. Just bleep at us when you want to say something. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh dear, what a what a wonderful way to start things. Anyway, yes, we're here to talk about roller coasters this week. Um, so uh, I want to kick this off. Uh, Matt, you have a uh, a podcast called Attraction Obsession. Yes. Uh, I take it from that that you love roller coasters and attractions and so forth. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That is a probably the uh, what am I trying to say? The uh, I lost my train of thought. But absolutely yes. I mean, it, it, it's a huge. I guess a part of my life in a sense i live in orlando so i'm smack dab between the major orlando parks disney universal i'm a stone's throw away from tampa which has their roller coaster parks and i'm very fortunate enough to be married to a woman who loves as much as i do and we arrange at least one if not two vacations or holidays around visiting a park with roller coasters that we've never been on before so yes to put it mildly which is what i was looking for yes they are a big part of my life you live in the happiest place in the world, apparently. I live in what is advertised as the happiest place in the world, yes. <laughs> and Jim, there's you live... visiting and then there's living. Yeah. Jim, you live in one of the um, the rainiest parts of the world, don't you? I do, I do. <laughs> in the north of England, where there are probably no roller coasters, actually. <laughs> it, it's where ducks go to commit suicide sometimes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's true, but I have been to Orlando many, many times. And uh, for my sins in my youth, I did work in a fun fair. <laughs> oh. And I uh, got to see the fun things happen behind the scenes at theme parks. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So, so you know the ins and outs of things. It's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> After this, will anyone be wanting to get on a roller coaster? Um, probably. I mean, I, I, it's not put me off going to theme parks. Um, Provided they're run by professionals, 
not by the <laughs> not by the cowboys in every sense of the word in the one I work for. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! This is getting <clears throat> scarier by the second. <laughs> <laughs> which which is now gone. It's now gone. It's been raised to the ground, and the uh, the land has been sowed with salt. It no longer oh. exists. <laughs> which is why I can badmouth them with impunity. Because uh, what they're going to do? Fire me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Matt, have you ever worked in um uh, at uh, what would you call them? Roller coaster parks? Attract attraction parks? I'm not too sure. Amusement um, parks? Yeah, over here, I don't know if this is a worldwide term, but it's uh, for like the big Disney, the multiple and Universal, the multiple areas that are grandiosely schemed and themed. They're commonly referred to as theme parks. The parks that are just have rides, but nothing really centered around them as a theme or amusement park. So it's theme parks and amusement parks are the two most common words. Yeah. But to answer your question, no, I actually never, I never have. Ah, oh, so you, you've never seen backstage, never pulled back the curtain. Well, I have. Um, I have. A, it's hard not to have to live in this area as long as I have and not come in contact with people that work with them. So I've made a lot of close friends, not because they're in theme parks, but, well, not because they're not working for theme parks, but uh, I've made a lot of close friends that do a lot of the deep behind the scenes work and have gotten the opportunity to see how some of these things work and sometimes not for the better as uh, yeah, we've already alluded to. Yeah. Okay. Greg, I'm wondering if you're still there at all. I don't know if you can hear me or not. We we can just about hear you. Um, uh, you you yeah. may want to raise the baked bean can to your mouth a little bit more though. <laughs> He's going to smash his computer up. Isn't he? Oh, man. I, I, I get the feeling that you're going to smash your computer Hello. up very Hello. soon. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll let Greg chime in when he can chime in. Greg, just shout stuff, obscenities, or whatever you wish, <laughs> just to get through to us. Because I, I really want you on it. Basically, the reason why we're doing roller coasters today, oh, he's dropped off again, is... I, I, I put out the, the call when I relaunched Shonky Lab. I put out the call for people to come along and say, you know, do you want to do a show with me? Would you like to do a show with me? And Greg was one of the first people that said, yeah, okay, let's do roller coasters. Um, I'm also looking forward to the show that I do with him about the internet as well. <laughs> <laughs> and inter internet providers, maybe. I don't know. Um, yes, um, so... He put it forward, so I, I really want Greg on here because I know that he's a um, a roller coaster fanatic. You know, he's been on millions, millions of rides. I I don't know how many rides he's taken, but I know that he's been on various. And he, he's travelled around the country chasing roller coasters and chasing that thrill as well. Um, I lay my ca cards on the table right now. I flipping hate them. <laughs> I I really, really hate them. Um. I, I, I get no fun out of queuing up for hours. I get no fun out of watching children be be violently ill after they've been on these <laughs> rides. I ha I get no fun from watching children crying and moaning at their parents. Why can't I go on that ride? Why can't I go over there? Why am I too small? Why why won't I fit on the bubble works? And so yeah, I I like going to these places to hold people's coats. I'm very good at that. <laughs> so, so never get a job as a ride operator, Elton, because what you described there was my working day for thirteen hours for weeks on end. <laughs> of what? <laughs> just watching children cry, cry, be sick, fight. Uh, um, see, I, I actually take advantage of everything you talk about. We kind of make a impromptu scavenger hunt every time we go to the park and whichever finds the most of what you just uh, laid out we don't really win a prize but it's a nice friendly bet and a way to pass the time and get less annoyance out of those types of people oh it's like <laughs> it's like a real life version of where's waldo or where's wally isn't right? it <laughs> yeah Where, where's the binoculars there they are over there someone's dropped some oh, there's man. always a there's a five point instant bonus especially at disney world when for the first person to hear any parent say do you know how much me your father and or mother paid for this trip <laughs> 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 oh brilliant oh no i'd love to hear that and, <laughs> you know you know mickey and donald and all the people that dress up 
in them sort of costumes as well, they must hear tons and tons of that crap all oh, the time. Oh, yeah, I can only imagine. You know, you've got such a thick skin to 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 keep that smile on your face. I'm, I'm sure they're swearing behind the, the, the big heads. And oh, thinking, yeah. And thinking, just fuck off, little child. Fuck, don't <laughs> tread on my foot again. Please, honestly. So I remember at Disney, all the staff used to... At one point, it, it, it felt weird me driving my parents around. And now, no, it's the norm. I drive you. You're not driving me. Let me drive you. Because otherwise, it freaks me the crap out. Okay. Um, and it's just more the control thing of not having a big red button where I can hit it and say, stop, please. You know, I'm I'm going up 45 degrees here. This is abnormal. I don't like this. And what's that clicking going on? What the hell's that? That's scaring the crap out of me. And I I just don't know. It, it, it scares the living bejesus. Once I'm... I'm going fast in a straight line. That's fine. I can deal with that. It's the um, it's the, the sheer terror of you know dying on one of these things. I know I'm <laughs> not going to die on one of these things. But it's just the sheer terror of not being in control, not well, being able well, to slow myself down. Well, you say that, Alan, but... <laughs> I mean, on, for, for me, I, I, yeah, I mean, I can tell you some stories. It will really put you <laughs> up for life. Because <laughs> you, you can die on these things. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> Admittedly, I think generally you have to be really stupid to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, for me, I when I was younger, it was kind of it was like, give me the biggest roller coaster, give me your biggest, most terrifying ride. And uh, and now I'm much more kind of, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, how's it? Um, Big Thunder Mountain, Magic Kingdom. Yeah, fine, fine. The Bray Rabbit one, fine, fine. Um, Atlantis at Sea World, fine. Um, that one they have at um, Bush Gardens, uh, one there for the desert. Oh, is it Kiri, where it's a, you're hanging from the top of it, and it goes oh, just a near vertical. That's it. Yeah, there's a yep. nearly near vertical drop. That 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 can fuck right off. No, oh, <laughs> I'm not oh, putting myself I, through that. <laughs> I couldn't get there fast enough when that opened. <laughs> so if I'd been a few years younger, you wouldn't. You'd, you'd have had to fight to keep me off that. But <laughs> just at some point after I turned forty, something went in my head. It was kind of like, oh no, no. I just it's the actual dropping. I'm fine with. What what frightens me is I know I've got a long queue for me to get nervous, and then the long crawl up to the first big drop. Mm. And it's that that anticipation that I think might do my heart in now. <laughs> yeah, I. The first time, I think for the first time in my life, I got off a ride and went, that may have been a little too much for me. It was this year, speaking of, of getting older, I, man, the, God, I hate this topic so much, but I guess now you put that in my head. Well, we'll do a show on that later if you want. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that, for the first time ever in my life, I, I went to um, we went to Magic Mountain in California in Valencia, California, for the first time I got off a ride going, that may have been a little too much. I don't think I'm going to do that again. It was called X2. Have you guys seen anything about that? No, but I know. I've been on, I've been on that, Matt. Yeah. Okay. That was the so first I, time I went. 